response video to Piro. Um, appropriate video in the background. Uh, probably further away than I need to be. Oh, chair. Ugh. Okay. Oh, sinking. Fuck. All right. Should have just stayed where I was. Anyway, outside. There's a little bit of wind, but it should be okay. Oh, cat. <laughs> He's coming fast. Hey, Gimpy. Hey. Um, so anyway, he did a, a, an hour of video, an hour, more than an hour actually, and he didn't say anything, um, you know, on the subject of life being um, purposeful and accomplishing something and worth the price paid for it and all that crap kind of subject, this anti-natalism stuff, which I think is a, got to come up with a better word, it's a little too gay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, he basically said, life's interesting. And that's all the justification he needs and uh, he likes to gamble so interesting and he likes to gamble um, he still thinks satisfying a desire is the same as enduring a misery there, there it's not a category error to throw those two things into the same pile and I think it is a category error <laughs> decisively um, a category error they're a different thing um, Silly ambitions, um, silly senses of accomplishment, uh, gratifications in a good chase, or whatever it might be, um, are a different kind of um, thing, mechanism, than is just the raw fact of something getting cancer and dying miserably and enduring um, you know, lots of moments of conscious distress. Um, one is an absolute, without a doubt, bad thing, and the other is only good as a matter of individual perception. And if you don't have that individual perception of value, if you don't have a taste for it, it has no taste. Where the suffering, it has a taste universally. It has a, a decidedly um, negative character that can't be unraveled by any kind of consciousness. If you impose that sensation on a consciousness, it can only interpret it one way, and that is, oh, this is fucking horrible. And that's it. Um, so right there, there's a problem in the conversation if there's not going to be a concession that these are two different mechanisms. The mechanism of attraction and the mechanism of um, suffering. They're not the same thing. We're not talking about a fear and a desire. We're talking about suffering and desire and how they affect squirrel. Um, makes cats a little crazy. Uh, anyway, part of the chase. Uh, so yeah, he also described uh, like, like a, as if animals are not involved in a consumption game. And it's not about how they look or how ugly they are, how many teeth actually show. The fact is, is that a dolphin every day um, imposes a bad day on a lot of other sentient creatures. I mean, every day it does that. It imposes a bad day, a bad moment on a lot of sentient creatures. And it looks all smiley and happy, but it's not doing a smiley and happy thing to get through its day. It's stealing energy from other organisms at their expense and that's just clearly what's happening so I think it's just kind of bullshit to try to um, whitewash and that's all it is it's a whitewash this looks pretty to us and this isn't even a pretty time of year but I mean yeah it all makes sort of sense but that's because we've been built by and I said two billion years okay and you know why I said two billion years all you assholes who keep making a comment about it is because that's how long I'm saying sentient life Life that could go ouch, life that could have a misery has been around. I'm not talking about life itself. I don't care. All right, if, if the planet Earth was covered with green slime, I don't care. If it's covered with a bunch of bacteria, I don't care. I only care about the sentient feeling creatures. So that's when the ball game started for me in, my, in, in, in how I define it. And I, so I thought that was already a known and a given that I'm talking about sentient life. When I'm talking about feeling life, I'm talking about the life that feels. I don't, um, I don't worry about, um, you know, 
this piece of green. It didn't, it didn't scream when I did that. Be not just because it doesn't have a mouth, but because it doesn't have a brain. And uh, that was a whole change in how evolution worked, was when this desire mechanism was created, <clears throat> and when it manifests, and uh, how evolution has capitalized on playing with it to create organisms that were um, motivated by a, a, an intense desire or attraction. And uh, it wasn't just a physical mechanism anymore. It wasn't just a reflex. It was something that had to be incorporated as a feeling first, a sensation. And then the body and the mind reacted to the sensation. And it's a different kind of mechanism. So anyway, back to the real subject. Um, hmm, I'm going to have to relight that. I can't, can't imagine <laughs> having my nice cigarette without a cigarette. But it's probably best to wait until I'm done talking. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so all right, the gambling line I just thought was such a great throwaway. Um, just perfectly illustrates how he just doesn't get the argument at all. If you were gambling with your own welfare, Pyro, everybody, yeah, go ahead. You want to see if you can, how far you can stick your head down the toilet? And uh, you want to, you know, see how many asses you can stick your head in? Go ahead. Fuck, knock yourself out, asshole. If it gets you off, fine. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about gambling with other people's welfare. That's the whole point here is that you're not taking account or responsibility for what it means to gamble. It means that you're, it's drunk driving. It means you're implicating other people's welfare in the game you want to play. So you want to play some silly game where you think you're accomplishing something because you have a little hard-on for something and you want to go chase it and see if you can stick your little willy in it. Um, well, fine. If, if it's just you involved in the game, then I say, fine. Go ahead, asshole. Knock yourself out. Um, literally. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. So it's, it's completely irrelevant to the real argument, which is, do you have a right to impose the experiment on, a, on somebody else? Do you have a right to gamble with their welfare? To leave a world a mess and say, well, they'll figure it out, they'll clean it up, they'll fix it, even though there's no past record of fixing really taking place. I mean, not in any big way. Um, yeah, you're just going to keep passing the buck. And uh, that's bullshit on its face, it isn't a, a world of sufficient quality of life for the, the generic person, the generic um, Bangladeshian style, Indonesian style human who's going to endure this gamble you're going to take. Um, they're the one that's going to pay for it, not you. And so it's just bullshit. You're not going to be the elephant man. You're not going to be all the things that you're going to throw them into the risk pile of being. You're not going to be me. Um, it's that simple. You're not going to have to live with the, the Poeskian little neurology that's going on inside of my head. And so you have no right to take that authority and say, I'm going to impose it until you create your fail-safe. I mean, if you want to say the argument is, well, we could give people the right to die. Well, if you give people the right to die, and the right to die soon enough, quick enough, when they need to do it, <laughs> you know, don't force them to endure more than they want. Um, before you give them that right. But let's just say, theoretically, um, yeah, if that's going to be part of the equation, then you do that first. You create the fix first. You, you, you make the bed before you force somebody to sleep in it. It's not that complicated. So yeah, fix that piece of policy first. Give, get, get an international right to die in, in place, and then start making your argument about how you're not imposing. You're not imposing a severe enough risk for anybody to have an objection or to claim objection. Because I'm objecting. I'm objecting to you taking the authority to say you have a right to impose life on me. Because you don't. You don't have a right to play a gamble game with my intelligence. Because I'm going to be too smart for you. I'm going to figure out that life is shit when I'm seven years old. And uh, then it's just going to be, I'm going to spend the next 30 or 40 years just having the guts to stand up and say, yeah, this is shit. All you assholes have been duped so fucking thoroughly. You're chasing nothing, and you're paying this incredible price for it. Um, you're disgusting. Uh, not only in your personal price that you're willing to pay, you're humiliating yourselves, but in the, pi in the price you're imposing, because you haven't created a system of fairness. You, you have complete economic um, 
hierarchies and, and uh, entitlements that are disgusting. Um, you steal from the poor to give to the rich. That's simple. Um, this is a shithole. You want to keep defending the shit? Fine. Uh, but you will defend the shit. You'll say all we need is food and water and uh, a patch of blackberries and life is cool. And it's sufficient to a purpose. And there's no purpose there. There's no accomplishment. There's a DNA molecule consuming and reproducing. Um, there's nothing being accomplished. There's nothing being made or created. Little bits of little, little um, joy juice. And if that's all it's about is your little sense of accomplishment or our, our feeling of bliss well yeah we can do that we can just create a bunch of retards let's make the human race even dumber and they'll be even happier in their in their squalor in their cesspool in their in their little turd swimming games they'll enjoy them even more if we make them stupid so let's genetically make human beings dumber and dumber and dumber and we'll make them happier and happier and happier um, that's a truth that's a fact and that's what makes, that's what points another arrow at your philosophy and says, ah, oh, is this the intelligent perception or is this just the bullshit? Um, is this an, an idiot servant, essentially? Yeah, you're intelligent, but um, not in the way that matters. You can't get the most obvious truth right. So, yeah, you can, you can multiply ten-digit numbers, um, you know, but you can't avoid pooping in your pants. Um, and that's what you're doing when you defend nature. You're just pooping uh, because there's nothing to defend. It's all aesthetics. It's all an illusion of um, attractiveness and pleasantness uh, when really all it is is tooth and fang. It's um, chase for no purpose. It's treadmills going nowhere. Um, it's energy, energy in motion. It's star energy uh, animating a bunch of matter that will accomplish absolutely nothing, uh, just the delusion, the self-illusion of accomplishment, just some sort of personal perception of ego gratification. I beat life. And that's all you assholes are getting off on. You're like some moron jackass who, oh, I threw the basketball into the hoop better than the other guy, and so I'm Superman. And you're all full of yourselves, and you didn't accomplish shit. You didn't do shit. All right, uh, so that takes care of the gambling one. And so now we'll go to, um, it's interesting. So that's his justification for gambling with other people's welfare is because it satisfies his sense of interesting. Life is interesting. I mean, it's not even, you can't even do anything with a word like interesting. Uh, again, because that's just another word tied to this addiction thing. So that would probably be a good point to get to is, is that you're, reluctance to accept um, uh, my definition of addiction. And yes, it's going to have to be my definition. There's any kind of strict definition. These are all, Every word we have in our vocabulary has been perverted and distorted um, by the majority meme. The majority memes will get to define what words mean and what implications they have and, and what limitations they'll put on those words. So yeah, we don't really have a word for psychology Okay, that is completely controlled by something besides a rational entity, um, a rational idea or conception. And that's what all of our motivations are. I mean, the vast majority of our motivations are, are, are manifest out of some sort of ego. Even to do good, we have to make it a personal ambition. For me to do good in the world, I have to make it a personal ambition for me to do it. All right, it isn't going to happen. I have to make it personally important. And so that, that's even more of the corruption of exactly how corrupt our psychology is. And you take no account of the psychology that's motivating human beings and how, how um, when you dissect that psychology, how trivial and silly it actually is. And it's, it's, it's almost um, <laughs> laughably um, moronic. Uh, that we would actually have to do that. To actually do good in the world, we actually have to make it an issue of our own self-esteem. For me to become a vegetarian, I have to actually make myself feel bad about myself if I don't become a vegetarian. Uh, that's the only way I can... I have to make it a personal interest. Um, and, and that's the way we are constructed. And uh, so to use some sort of psychological word like interesting... Interesting is like saying, um, 
Um, I mean, it's no better than any other thirst or hunger. Uh, interesting is, is, again, implying like there's something, you know, compelling you or, or attracting you to something interesting. Um, it doesn't say anything about what is the character of the thing itself because it's of interest to you does not give it automatic um, qualification as a good it because human beings obviously want things that aren't necessarily good for them or for the people around them and so saying something's interesting just doesn't mean anything it just doesn't say anything life has got to be productive it's got to be accomplishing something to justify the expense. So again, we're full circling back to the real big question, which is, is it by its nature, is it possible for it to accomplish something? Is it something other than as I describe it, which is the spilling? The creation of a human being is essentially the spilling of a pile of need vomit. And the human through their life will attempt to clean up some portion of that, to satisfy, to get back the pieces they have lost, to, to, to gain some kind of self-actualization, some sort of sense of, of mental satisfaction and comfort by, you know, achieving enough getting laid or having enough good dinners or having enough bottles of wine or enough good movies or whatever the thing is. Um, and... Uh, and how much of it will they leave on the floor? And then how much will they cause in other people through their consumption, through their desire to have a cheaper television? How many people will they enslave in another country um, for their desire to have that cheaper thing? How many other backyards will they dump their pollution in? Um, how many people will you harm in some indirect way and then in sometimes very direct ways where you get into a relationship with somebody and you you use that person um, they would have been better off having not met you I mean have, have we all had relationships or interactions with people where in spite of our own desire not to be a negative influence that we did nothing good for them in the end um, that's more milk we spill by being here it's more consequential um, problem that's created by the fact that we eat, we consume, we waste, we produce pollution, we are incapable of um, easily getting through this game um, without making more of a mess, a mess that the next generation will have to clean up. So besides having to clean up their own, to gain their own satisfaction, as a child is born today in America, they're also born now with a huge liability to pay back, some huge debt they have to pay back to this tiny percentage of human beings that own all these IOUs. So this is another mess, that they, another, another imposition piled on them. They owe somehow work and, and uh, time of their life and an element of suffering that they have to somehow pay back because the last generation decided to mortgage a piece of their comfort. And that's the, that's the model of the human. That's the model of our nature. It is selfish. And you're just um, pretending it's not. And pretending that there's some sort of, um, you have some sort of plan to get the human race to a place where that mechanism doesn't exist. Where people will work 10 hours a day to build the sufficient, you know, you talk about food and water and you, just, you leave out things like a roof and shelter and all the other things that you need uh, to have a life um, the, and the raw space required per human if you're going to have that rich life. Uh, there's a certain acreage per human being that's going to be required, a certain amount of rainforest per human being to create the filtering of their air, um, a certain amount of undisturbed ocean, a certain amount of undisturbed coral reef, unexploited, all these things that there has to be per person and you're not taking any account for any of that stuff and just playing some game. Um, you know, like if you give somebody a cup of gruel and some water a day, um, you know, the game is going to be just fine. And uh, we don't have to worry about all the diseases and we don't have to worry about all the other things that are going to um, degrade the quality of that, that existence. Yeah, and uh, you, 
are capable of taking responsibility for the experiment. So if this is a, your rat maze game, I've said it before, I mean, if I had the power to, to make it right here in my hand, I could invent the planet Earth and put all those little creatures on it and have them for two billion years evolve into little funny monkeys in their little funny dresses, um, would I do it? And the obvious answer is, of course not. What, what motivation would I have to do that? That would be a sick, disgusting experiment to impose. And uh, the only reason why you're talk the way you do, I think, is because you have this ego issue and think your you know, ego is going to somehow live on through your prodigy. And there's absolutely no evidence of that ever happening. <laughs> you know, the son is rarely the father. Uh, the acorn falls like six miles from the damn tree in most cases I've seen. So uh, that's just a big pile of crap. It's a new experiment. You've made it. <clears throat> you're saying it's worth it because you're interested. And that's just way fucking short of a good enough excuse, especially in the context of the billions of people who are irresponsibly reproducing, who are reproducing not because they're interested, but because they want somebody to farm their land, um, or because they want something to unconditionally love them, or because they want something, because they're getting off on it some way. It's not a good enough reason for an experiment of this high risk, especially, again, when the risk is not yours. The risk is mine. You're imposing the risk on people like me. And um, I'm saying, fuck you. Why, if I won't create the experiment, why the fuck should I live in your experiment? Why the hell should I do that? Why should I be obliged to do that? Why should I have to come back here and learn the same lessons all over again that all you fuckers are stupid morons and I'm going to be stuck for eternity, living eternity as far as practical viewpoint and horizon that's an awful long way away. It's a long march to freedom from your exploitation, from your interest in gambling. Um, yeah, it's a long road to get to my salvation from your reckless behavior. And, uh, yeah, I resent it. And fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So, enough of a video. Um, but yeah, for an hour, you really should have Somewhere in the video, you should have got to something relevant, <laughs> in my opinion, it wasn't close. So anyway, put the other video in the background, if the camera didn't fall over. Really, it looks like it fell over. Camera in the window over there. Anyway, probably a failed experiment, but they're good cameras. Yeah, Ten bucks. Um, no sound, though. And um, no screen, so you can't see what you're videoing. <laughs> but it has a zoom. And it's uh, 1080p, which is, you know, outrageously, but the quality is good, is the thing. It's too good even for my um, crappy computer. So I won't be able to do any editing with 1080p videos. They're just too monstrous. And there's no place to display them anyway, so it really doesn't matter. You really don't need that much quality. So till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Pleasant day. Work to do, and I better get to it. So, till next time.